Let's talk a little bit about the shape of polymers, right? We keep on describing them as these long spaghetti strands that have these kinked back and forth. And, you know, if you had tiny little tweezers and you grabbed the ends of it, you could stretch it all the way out. One question that you might have is, okay, if I did that, what would be the total length of that chain? What would be my total chain length, right? Well, that's given by this formula here. L equals N times D times sine of theta over 2. What is all this? N is the number of molecular bonds along this chain. D is the individual bond length. And then theta is the angle of the bond. So, for example, if it's a carbon-carbon backbone, right? You've just got carbons going all the way along. Let's pick a really simple thing like polyethylene, right? Polyethylene, that means that you've got hydrogens coming off each of the side of each one of these carbons. But it means that along the backbone itself, it's just carbon bonded to carbon. And we know that carbon-carbon distance is equal to 0 0.154 nanometers, for example. Right? And because it's carbon all the way across, we know that this bond angle, since these are, all these carbons have four bonds, that leads to this angle of being 109.5 degrees. Therefore, for this polymer, as we've drawn it here, which has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so this would be decane, right? Decane, the hydrocarbon decane, we could figure out the length of it. If it was all the way stretched out, we'd say, great, it's got right? We can count the bonds along here. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bonds because it's 10 carbons. So there's nine bonds between those 10, right? So the length would be equal to nine times the distance of each bond, 0 0.154 nanometers, times sine of 109.5 degrees divided by two. So let's punch that into our calculator. I get that it's 1.13 nanometers, right? So if you could stretch this thing out, you would be 1.13 nanometers. Now in the real world, do you think they're stretched all the way out? No. Why would they be? Think about bonding and entropy. Now stretching out, being totally stretched out like this, would maximize your chance at forming bonds, right? You can form van der Waals bonds along there. So there is an enthalpic reason why it would want to be stretched out. But entropy says, you know what? I have way more degrees of freedom if I'm just a ball of spaghetti noodles just all over the place, right? These are much more disordered. So there's a, there's a competition here between enthalpy and entropy, just like we've seen so many times before, right? Um, because of that, you don't end up with typically things being all the way stretched out. They tend to meet in the middle, and it's sort of a ball-like shape. And we even have a way of calculating the length uh, or the size of this ball-like shape, right? We can calculate this radius. That radius is going to be equal to r, r is going to be d times the square root of n, right? So if this whole thing is sort of a glob, your polymer, then we can figure out the radius, and that radius will be d, the bond distance, right? multiplied by the square root of the number of steps along this, right? Now, why is it able to make this shape? Well, because these are single bonds. And we said that with single bonds, right, when you have these single bonds, each one of these bonds can actually, it could have been rotated anywhere in this cone, right? Here, it's drawn here a little bit better. You can see that cone. That bond could be rotated around it, right? So that ability to rotate gives this much more flexibility in making bundles of polymers, right? Um, these things can intertwine with one another, and that actually leads to a strengthening mechanism. If they get tangled up on each other, now when you pull it, they have to untangle, which might be pulling another strand. Um, this might cause the elastic response. For example, in elastomers, these strands get knit together in small points, right? So they, there's what's called cross-linking. So mostly you've got your chains just kind of all over the place, but every once in a while you bond them. You put a few links just here and there, right? And now when you stretch this thing, those are covalent bonds. They're not van der Waals forces. We know that there's van der Waals forces just all over the place through here, but these are not van der Waals forces. These are strong covalent bonds so that as you stretch it, those really strong bonds get stretched and they want to collapse back, okay? Um, so doing things like adding double bonds or big bulky side groups, that will limit your ability to rotate in response to an applied stress or thermal vibrations, right? Um, they're not going to be as good as that. Um, 
Anyways, so that's how you calculate length. Now imagine that you had this scenario. What about carbon's or nylon 6-6? Six, six? If you were trying to figure out the length of, of your polymer, right, how would you go about it doing it here? What would you have to do differently than what we did before? Well, you've got a bunch of carbons. Let's write the carbons here. So you could figure out uh, your distance along the carbons, but you also now have nitrogen. So you have a, right here, you have a carbon bonded to a nitrogen. That's going to have a different bond length that you would need to look up. Well, what else is different? How about this one right here? This carbon and that carbon have double bonds. So instead of being a tetrahedral coordination with the bond angle of 109.5, you're going to have a different bond angle, right? This bond angle right here and right here are going to be different. It's going to be closer to 120 degrees, but it's not even going to be 120 degrees because you know that oxygen here will have uh, a different um, dipole basically than the carbon so it's going to be slightly different bond length. You'd have to look those things up if you're going to calculate the overall length of something like nylon 6.6.